Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another question and narrative video and today's topic is the Nephilim are here. I'm sure that most of you watching this have at least heard of this by now if you haven't watched any reels about it or any videos about it. The first time that I came across it was on Instagram. Somebody had posted a reel for it and I I get impatient. So instead of watching the reel, I kind of just clicked over to the article and I read it and I thought to myself, oh my word, what are these people trying to do? And I know that most people are saying that this is about predictive programming and it very much could be about predictive programming, but that doesn't negate the fact that people are very likely seeing things that really are demonic and it's not just some disorder. So let's just read what this says. A rare disorder causes man to see people's faces as demonic. The condition causes faces to appear distorted. My first thought was I woke up in a demon world, the patient said. Victor Shira had always had sharp vision. But one life-altering day in November 2020, he noticed out of the blue that people's faces around him looked demonic. Their ears, noses, and mouths were stretched back, and there were deep grooves in their foreheads, cheeks, and chins. My first thought was I woke up in a demon world, said Shira, 59, of Clarksville, Tennessee. You can't imagine how scary it was. Someone he knew taught visually impaired people and suggested he might have Prosopometamorphopsia, or PMO, the extremely rare neurological disorder of perception causes faces to appear distorted in shape, size, texture, or color. I'm just going to jump right in here, and I'm going to say that I don't believe that this is a disorder. I believe that there are people who really are able to see demonic beings or Nephilim. And the reason that that they're calling it rare is because most people are not willing to speak up about it because they think there's something wrong with them. And the reason that they're now coming out with this, I believe, is because there are more and more people who are having so many things revealed to them. And there are likely more people who are going to start being able to see these sorts of things. And they are probably anticipating that, or at the very least, they might actually be getting more reports about this. And so they might be trying to just nip it in the bud, but let's just continue reading. The distortions appear only when he sees people in person, not in photographs or through computer screens. That's very interesting. That gave scientists an opportunity to visualize what the warped faces look like for a person with PMO, something they had never been able to do before. To create the visuals, the researchers asked Shara to describe the differences between photographs of people's faces and the real life people standing in front of him. The researchers then used image editing software to modify the pictures to match Shara's description. So, I will leave a link in the description box to, to this, if you want to read it. And this is what he is saying these faces look like. So these are the normal faces, and these are the faces that he is claiming that he sees. And this immediately reminds me of this. This is from Attack on Titan. And this is, if you've watched it, this is Aaron Yeager as a titan and i see the same stretched back face i see the same ears it all looks very similar to me notice even the grooves by the by the face now this might not have actual grooves but just the cheeks in general are distorted so that was the first thing that i thought of when i saw these and then when i thought about that i thought to myself you know what you are starting to see more and more TV shows and movies that show people seeing what they think are normal people whose faces are suddenly morphing into demonic figures. And I can't help but wonder, what are they trying to tell us? Are they trying to make it so that when people do start seeing these things, that they think that there's something wrong with them or they try to bottle it up because they don't want to be 
you know, put in the lunatic asylum, so to speak. And we know they love to do that lots in the past. So this is from Grimm and her name is Adeline Shade. She is something known as a hexen beast. And so when a normal person sees her, she looks like this. But when a Grimm sees her, her face can morph to look like this. And actually, the very first time that the main character of this show realized that he was a Grimm was because he saw her morph into this. And this is just another example of her morphing into the Hexen Beast. And again, it, it actually does seem to have pretty much of a similarity to the first photos. I'm sure many of you know this cult classic. This is from They Live with Rowdy Roddy Piper. And in that movie, they actually needed a pair of sunglasses, special sunglasses, to be able to see what other people saw as normal human beings. But when they put on these sunglasses, they were able to see these creatures. And again, yes, it may well be part of the predictive programming, but I'm going to say it again. Peace. There are some people who can actually see these things. I guarantee it. This is from a show called Resident Alien. And in that movie, everyone in the town sees this guy, his name's Harry, as just a regular human being, except for this little boy right here. This little boy can see him in his true form. And his parents, when he tries to tell his parents what he sees, his parents go so far as they they got ready to put him in a boarding school and like send him away because they thought that there was something wrong with him. So if you have so many different movies and shows that are coming out with things like this, people who do actually see things like this in everyday life are clearly going to think that there's something wrong with them. And they're not going to say anything about it. And indeed, if they do say things about it, people are going to say, oh, well, you're just influenced by the entertainment industry. So again, I'm just going to reiterate that I, in my opinion, this is not a disorder. This is just someone who has the sight and can, and I don't, I don't mean the sight in some weird new agey kind of way. I mean, they are able to see things as they really are. And this would include Nephilim. And most of us who, who, you know, are questioning the narrative, we know that the Nephilim have been here since, you know, the, almost the beginning of the world, they have been here and they are still here. And it's getting to the point where, yes, some people may very well be able to, quote, see them better than most. And as time goes on, and as this revealing that seems to be happening um, continues to increase, I believe that we're going to see more and more people who are able to discern things like this. Now, on the subject of the Nephilim, I just wanted to share some comments that I recently got that I thought were extremely interesting. So the first one is from Susan Yeager. Isn't that funny? We were just looking at the Titan of Aaron Yeager, and here is Susan Yeager. I'm sure it's no relation, but it's, it says, I saw a flying creature end of last summer, tiny like a hummingbird, come with the hummers to the feeder at dusk. I was sitting in my wheelchair in the kitchen with the lights off, watching the last hummingbirds come in for a drink. I have a feeder at the window. And there it was. I saw it. I watched it, hovering like a hummingbird. It was waiting to get a drink. Then it flew up to the feeder. That's when it saw me. We looked right at each other. Its face was white. It had black round eyes and it had legs. Not sure if it had feet. Then it saw me in the shadow. We looked at each other for a split, split, split second, and it was gone, fast like a hummingbird. I assume it had wings of some kind by the way it moved back and forth, up and down. It was maybe two and a half inches in length. I'll tell you, it looked like a grasshopper with a head, legs, and a white face with panda eyes. Its legs just hung there while it hovered. It was hanging with the hummingbirds and waiting for its turn to drink. We rebuked it collectively in Jesus' name. 
in the video that I recently posted about the White Witch being a Nephilim, I was talking about how C.S. Lewis in his Chronicles of Narnia book is alluding to the fact that there are creatures that are not born of the line of Adam and Eve. And C.S. Lewis, in fact, postulated that there may have been other people who were created either before or at the time of Adam and Eve. And this is what is often called the day six people. And he believed that creatures such as this, such as the, the creature that was just described, this was the closest thing I could find in an image. I know it's not, it's probably not even close, but he postulated that beings like this were descendants of the the fallen angels and the humans who were not part of the line of Adam. And so they, in fact, did create Nephilim sort of like this, like fairies, like gnomes, like imps, like leprechauns. This sighting of this fairy-like or pixie-like being reminded me of the books and the movie The Spiderwick Chronicles and all of the the beings that Arthur Spiderwick in those books was able to see and that he kept a meticulous journal of. Now, yes, that is a fiction book written for children, but again, we know that there is very often truth in fiction and just from the description of Susan's comment, the, the first thing that I thought of was Spiderwick Chronicles. And, you know, I think it's, there's a very good possibility that there are creatures like that who do descend from some sort of fallen angel and other being having a union of some sort. Now, this one is a little bit more disturbing, but it also fits right in with the Nephilim being here today. Um, narrative, I guess you could say, the just the topic that we're on today. So here this is um, Sunny Baby, and it says, I had a relative that had her PhD in theology and anthropology. She worked for a military contractor in a high secured facility. I was like five years old, and my grandma would pick me up from school, then go pick up Lewis. One day we got to the facility and she is outside and says there was some type of accident involving my grandpa and leave me with her and go attend to him. My mom would be called and she would take Lewis home on the way to our house. I was taken to her office, went through MP guarded doors. Many of them, I, many of them, I sat down. She called my mom and then told me she would go finish up the, in the lab and I was not to leave the office. Okay. Until I had to go pee. I walked across the hall, pounded on the door with my little hand, but it was not hurt. I go to the office and get a trash can to stand on it so I could hit the glass window to the lab door. Apparently, I set something off. Here come MPs and a big general type, a lot of commotion, but I just have to go pee. It was agreed I could use the restroom, but I had to walk through a lab with the promise that no matter what, I would only look at my feet. I was told I would hear very scary stuff, but I would be safe. I had to stay in the lines taped to the floor. I would not be safe and cameras would be on me. No tape in bathroom or right in front, nor cameras, but I would be safe. This point, I have to pee so bad, I agree. I walk through and I hear horrific noises and I look at my feet, but I have perfect peripheral vision. What I saw were a bunch of caged creatures. On the way home, I had to promise not to talk about what I saw and that when I was older and wiser, I could ask and I would be told. We moved. Years later, I am a teenager and we visit with Lewis. I asked her to keep her promise. She said the creatures were all born of human couples from around the world and they were parents who were told the babies were stillborn, but they were kept alive and brought to the facility. They were monster-like. Some were amphibious with gills. Some were monkey-like. Lewis shared that if she was the per that she was the person who leaked some photos to National Enquirer, and she shared she questioned her belief system to the point she drank too much. I never forgot that day, nor what I saw. My faith is solid after seeing what I saw. I am being brief to share the experience. There is more to it, but it would be like writing a novel with my pointer finger on my smartphone.
I asked her so many questions and wish she was alive today to ask more. Like how long did they live? Were they planning on releasing them like Shamu? What did they eat? I was more scared of the general dude and the MPs. My mother never knew until we met up with her as a teenager, and she showed us the original photos she leaked, and more the funny things she kept them all filed in a big knitting bag with needles, yarn, and pattern books. She didn't knit. That is a very, very interesting and disturbing story. So as I was reading this comment, what the... The whole idea of these parents who were having these babies and they were being told that their babies were stillborn and they were taking them. Well, it kind of reminds me of what happened in Stranger Things, if you've seen that. But it also reminded me of many alien abductions. Now, I don't believe that, quote, aliens are little green men from Mars. I believe that these creatures are demonic in nature and they are very likely somehow related to the nephilim if they not if they are not already the nephilim i'm thinking either fallen angels or nephilim not little green men maybe in appearance but not in the way that people usually do if you watch science fiction movies but one thing that is very often related with these stories of these abductions is that women are taken, they become pregnant, and then all of a sudden, they are no longer pregnant. They don't have any sort of problems. They don't have any sort of bleeding. There is no evidence of a miscarriage. All they know is that one day they're pregnant and the next day they are not. The baby is simply gone. And so what this comment reminded me of was something of that nature. And again, it just, it, it brings to mind the idea that these watchers were intermingling their seed with human beings because they wanted to create something in their image. And so I think it's very likely that that is what is happening in these abductions. And you do have to wonder if many of these vanishing pregnancies are ending up in facilities like what was just described in that comment. But just some stuff for you to think about. And that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my YouTube membership, I will leave a link in the description box or you can just click on it on my channel page. And I hope you have a great day.